So guys, we're going to talk to you a little bit about Spot Hog versus Black Gold. I, I run both. I don't know which one I'm going to start this year. Uh, last year I did the same thing. I set up two different bows, a Traverse and a Vertex. The Vertex had a Pro Sight from Black Gold on it, and the Traverse had the Spot Hog Fast Eddy. So I ended up going with the Vertex, but I didn't swap sights off. But right now, this is the VXR right handed 31 and a half. People do ask a lot, are you still shooting left handed? The answer is, yeah, a little bit, but. Bear season's right here, so I'm going right-handed, and uh, I don't got a time to mess around right now. I got a, I got a bear to kill, I got a turkey to kill, and um, I, I'll have time when that's done to probably mess with it more. And it's fun; it's just part of my process, and my process is supposed to be slow. So we're talking fast, Eddie. Uh, we're talking fast, Eddie. Took some of the best stuff from like the Tommy or the Hogfather and slapped it on a lighter version, which I like. So when I set this up. I originally had the uh, Hogfather on here, that's with the dovetail and all that, but man is it heavy. So I actually came back to the Fast Eddie just because it is lighter. This bow is kind of heavy. My whole setup was over 8 pounds, so I wanted to lighten up everywhere I could. As far as talking about features and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a great sight for elk hunting, although I'm a little nervous about being single pin. Now it is a double single pin on the post, there's two pins. And, and so you can kind of, like right now we're set up at, oh, we're slid down to 40, and then my bottom pin is at 53. And so that's good, at least you have a second chance to kind of, you know, if an animal moves, hopefully it's within that range. But at the end of the day, for elk hunting, I don't think it's a good idea for, in my experience, to be single pinned exclusively. This is kind of a compromise for me. I'm gonna definitely try this. Now, if I end up with tags where I'm just hunting like, Say I'm just hunting North Idaho brush, I can get away with a single pin. I'm gonna set this thing to 20 or 25 yards and that's as close a shot I'm gonna get. Now if I start hunting more open country like I did last year in Wyoming, I mean, gosh, my shots were, I shot the, a bull at 36 yards and uh, fortunately for me I had a 20, 30, 40 pin and I just pin gapped my 40, 30 on that bull. But let's say a bull's at 36 and then he spooks off, I cow call and stop him at 50. Now I'm, you know, now I'm screwed. So I, I definitely think it's important to kind of have three pens at the minimum if you're going to elk hunt out west, which is what I'm all about elk hunting. Uh, I think this is a good site. So as far as the features go, there's tons of reviews out there. So I'm not going to dive too deep, uh, but I'm going to tell you right now, as far as weight goes, it's built stout. It's built, it's built for war, and it's still pretty light. Uh, it's easy adjustable. You are not going to find sight tapes that are going to be congruent with this. You have to use spot hog sight tapes because this is a wheel and so you're going to loosen this up and you can spin this sucker up and down and it's a lot of sites are just on a vertical plane you go up and down this is on a wheel which means you have gears and these gears inside i've ran this site now and i've hunted with it i haven't had anything get stuck in there but there is a not you know a chance that you could have things come out here. I've seen Tim's have um, some sort of rubbing gasket type thing come out of his sight. They had to push back in there. So something to keep an eye on is that part, but it's super easy. The dial's got great texture and for you to, to be able to slide up and down. It's got good gription, that's a word. And then you have, right here, you can see that I'm ticked up at 40 and 54 yards, and you can just slide that up and down, and that's your two pins. You got your top, and your bottom in the post, which is great. Uh, the MRT, this is legitimate for different lighting. You can see you got yellow, green, yellow. You can, I think it comes with three different options and you can just take this off or I keep it on because you know, a lot of my shots on animals are low light and so this really helps match this up with the peep you run. I run a little bit of a bigger peep, it's a quarter inch. A lot of people run 3 16 and I've done that in the past, but for this setup this year we're going quarter inch but you can just take this right off if you want I'll take it off for you guys and it's you can swap it out or leave it just like this but you can really personalize it to your peep preference so mine's at a quarter inch the MRT is something that I haven't seen anyone else do as far as the housing goes you can obviously put a light on there where legal 
Most states uh, that I hunt don't allow electronics on the rig, so we'll take that off, unscrew that out. As far as adjusting windage, it's a course adjustment. We've decided that take that off and we say that clockwise or to the right moves the sight to the left and if you go counterclockwise to the left it moves the sight right. It's kind of confusing but we didn't see a lot of information out there on all the videos we, re we researched but that's just so you know. As far as first, second and third axis adjustments they are microed here. You have your rails right here you can crack these two and adjust your second and then you have right here as well that you can adjust your third, uh, you can obviously do a large wind, windage adjustment if you don't need to do a course. Overall, my opinion of this site is that it's awesome. I think I'm gonna probably use it, um, but I do wanna go over kind of a comparison of this site versus the black gold, because that's a question I get a lot, is which do I prefer? And I always say, yes, I don't have a preference. I like both, but uh, the bubble's pretty big. I like a big bubble. There's a lot of fibers in here. And it's really hard to screw these things up because they're built so well. If I had to say which one's built better, this one or the black gold, it'd be a hard one to call. They're both pretty equal as far as playing fields. This might be a little more stout and the Achilles heel may, may be that exposed gearing in the circle there. But all in all, really like the Fast Eddy. It's a good option. It's a lighter option. If you're looking for a dovetail, you could probably afford to go with like the, the Tommy or the Hogfather. But there you go, out of Oregon, good stuff. Do your own research, figure out what's best for you, but I would say it's definitely, it's a site that will help you probably shoot better because of the, the pin is in vertical plane and it doesn't take up a lot of your housing and I like that. Now, when we talk about black gold, I got a couple sites here. Now, if you're wondering why do I have two sites right now at my house. Well, this is going to somebody at the next elk shape camp if we ever get to do them. And so I usually hand one of these out. So Black Gold does partner with us. No no big contract, nothing like that. It just kind of gives some stuff to give away, which is really cool. This is a three pin verdict. Uh, the, they have a new one out and it's a lighter weight three pin and it still has all first, second, third axis adjustment. And we're gonna drop the notes right here what that one is. But this is your pro site. This one is got the dovetail. And here's what I like about the Pro Sight. It's really adjustable. Now this one's a five pin. I would probably prefer a three pin. And something that I did last year on my verdict is uh, I took my verdicts and I tried to figure out how to make it a four pin. Hear me out. So I wanted a 20, 30, 40, 50, and, I, and then I wanted to slide with my 50. This one right here is your five pin. So you're gonna have most people would go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then slide. What I ended up doing was trying to figure out how to get this bottom pin taken out of the equation. I ended up taking everything apart and getting that out of there, and so I have a custom four pin pro sight, and that's just my preference, and I would probably do the same. But on this sight, let's talk about the slider. It's right here, and like I said, it's a vertical adjustment. So you can slide up, slide down, and this sight tape's pretty universal. You don't have to just use exclusive black gold sight tapes. You could print one off Archer's Advantage or whatever software you have. It still has all the adjustments, so you can adjust the dovetail right here. You can loosen that up and make it how far out you want it. I generally don't run my sight all the way extended out. I usually have it fairly close. That's what's worked best for me in my setups. As far as adjusting the rails, it's just a micro adjust right here. You can, you can crack these and then there's a screw. So you crack those two right there and then you can just micro adjust with that screw and you can move this rail when, you know, when you're trying to level, if you've got a big level up against your riser or if you slapped a, a string level and your bow was in a vise and it was super plumb, you can match that for first axis. And then your second axis is this guy right here and this guy right here and you can adjust your bubble. And then your third axis on almost all black golds, they always put a piece of tape over it, but you just crack and you can adjust and you can move this thing. Uh, generally try to do that at the range. I know a lot of guys do door jam. I have a ham ski tool for third axis leveling, but ultimately you can kind of get it close and then fine tune it. And it's a very small, small adjustment here. There's not a lot of room for that screw to move. So this is not supposed to move very much. When you, and you want to check your uphill and your downhill. 
As far as this part that it's covered up in tape, this is what makes the ProSite super awesome for doing micro adjustment. If you're gonna have a multi-pin, you probably wanna go with the ProSite. So right here, these two screws in the top, this one and one to the your right, that is your 20. So this is your set screw, and then you loosen the 20, and then you can just move and micro adjust just your 20 up or down, okay? Same thing with the next two down. So it'd be the next, it'd be this one right here, and then the one to your left, that's your 30. So you can get your 20 set and then you can loosen those two and move it up or down and get your 30 perfect without affecting your gang. Okay? So you can do that with each individual pin, micro, micro adjusting, it's all on one drive. The cool thing about this is that, let's say you get 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 dopes, but you don't like, maybe all your pins are at the top of your housing, you can uh, crack all of them and then you can move the entire gang into the middle of your site and then you can just adjust, adjust your you know, your left or right up down and you can get the site. So you can always make sure your pins are exactly where you want in your peep. As far as you can always customize this color from black gold, you can get orange or whatever color that you think is cool. I've always liked this yellow. This stuff is definitely one of the brightest sites and you'll see this like if it's really bright out, you'll see this kind of start to turn purple. This will get more, if it's not as bright, it'll be, they call it their chromatic color. I'm not, dichromatic, I don't remember what it's called. They have a name for this, I'm not sure, I can't remember what it is. I'm supposed to know, but I don't. Um, but it's easy, adjustable. Now here's where I have screwed up in the past. This set screw right here, if you have this locked, you're not supposed to slide up or down, it's locked. But if you're like me and you're in Nevada and you have a bull at 70 broadside standing there with calm winds and you get excited and you're like, oh, slide down to 70, but you forget to crack that, you can strip it, which I did right there with a bull standing broadside. A nice 340 bull, I'll show you a video of it. He's sitting there at 70 yards broadside and I can't move my sight because I stripped it right there. So then I had to push it down to 70 in the field and then he walked off, didn't get a shot. And then I had to move my whole side manually back up to where, you know, your home, your home pin at 20. And I'll be honest, man, I broke that sight in the field and that's why I had a backup bow. But this is probably one of your better setups for elk because elk do move, especially mule deer as well. Single pin stuff would be more like whitetail or hunting antelope out of a blind over water or over a slide or over a pinch point where you kind of knew your set distances uh, or elk move and so if you're in open country an elk could be a 20 out to 60 and it could be all those ranges within while you're drawn back and so you don't have time to let down readjust range like there's so many variables so from an elk hunting standpoint i would probably recommend multi-pin and if you're going to go multi-pin and you're thinking between black gold and fast eddie fast eddie does have you can do pins on the side as well. Tim's got one that's a three pin and it's really dope. But I think for the adjustability and the micro adjusting of the pro site, you can't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you can do better. And honestly, this, they got a three pin that I would probably recommend overall. I'm probably gonna bust out um, and tear this apart and make this a four pin. Three gives you 20, 30, 40 for most people. You could do 25, 35 and 50. I'm for me. I want to go 20 30 40 50 those are set and then anything past 50 I got a range and I got a slide and I'm okay with that. So that's what that's my general differences So just wanted to kind of compare the differences between the fast Eddie and the black gold from my hunting experience uh, And and kind of give you the differences and, and what I've you know experienced in the field I think both are amazing and I think you can't go wrong either way but I know you guys are gonna have more technical questions. Drop them right there in the comments. We'll take your questions to Josh Jones of Spokane Valley Archery. He's, he'll be our subject matter expert and we'll dive in even deeper and do a second part video just for you guys answering your questions.